Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to my Open TTD tutorial video. Today we're going to be looking at getting hold of the game, getting it actually installed, and being able to play the game. Now, Open TTD is a fantastic business and transport simulation game, and it's an open source remake of a game that is well, nearly 30 years old, Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Not only is it a remake, but it's been expanded upon for over 20 years and is absolutely fantastic due to this refinement. So let's get it installed. Acquiring OpenTTD can be done from two main places. You can either get it from OpenTTD.org, that's the official OpenTTD website, or you can get it from Steam. Now, as a side note, you can also get it on the Android Play Store but this is a sort of port and it often lags behind in versions. I often get asked about the differences between the website version of the game and the Steam version of the game, and here's a chart detailing all of those differences. That's right, there's none, they're exactly the same. The Steam version might have some sort of code wrapper around it or something, I don't know, but that is irrelevant. When you play the game, they're exactly the same. So you may ask the question, which version of the game do you want to play? Well, I suppose it depends whether you like Steam or not. If you'd like to use Steam for your game's collections, and you also like the fact that it auto-updates and is easy to install through Steam, then go ahead. If you're not fond of Steam or don't have it, then the website version is the way to go. Installing OpenTTD via Steam is straightforward. Go to the store page and click the Play Game button. Follow the on-screen instructions, and there you have it. You're ready to start and launch the game. Downloading via the website is also straightforward. Go to OpenTTD.org and click the Download OpenTTD button. You're given a bunch of information and then you can choose your operating system to download in. Now, both in the website version and in Steam, you can choose to download the stable version, testing or nightly versions. I highly recommend you stick with the stable version, unless you're particularly wanting to test something. This is because, especially with the nightly versions, there can be bugs and issues which will get resolved later before they go stable. Once you've downloaded it from the website, you'll need to install it. Run the installer and go through the setup. The first is a welcome screen, the next is the license agreement. After accepting this, you need to choose where to install it. Once you've chosen where to install it, go to next and you can choose the start menu options and install. It doesn't take long to do and then click finish. Now the first time you download and install OpenTTD, you'll be prompted to download some graphics. This is because OpenTTD has a number of different graphic sets to choose from. Just click yes, download the graphics, and it'll download the base set of graphics. Now in addition to downloading your graphics, you'll also need to download your sound. We get a warning message about this. We'll do that in a minute. The first time you go in, you'll be prompted whether you want to take part in an automated survey. As a general rule, I would say yes, because it just gives the makers some statistics that help them make the game even better in future. But that's up to you. To download your sound, go into the Game Options button. From here, click the Sound tab, and you have two sorts of sound to deal with. The bass sound for the actual sounds, and then the bass music for the music. Next to either of them, there is a Get Content button. Click that, and I recommend going with the Open SFX bass sounds to begin with. You can choose other ones later if you fancy it. Click the tick, click download, OK, and then assign it in the drop-down. It's the same for the music. Click the Get Content button, choose the Open MSX option, again a good one to start with but there are other options. Click download, OK, and select it there. We now have all the bass graphics and sound. If you haven't already guessed, this is the main menu, and there's a few things that you might want to take a quick look at before starting a new game. Now we go back into those game options, and in here you can see in the general tab, you can choose your language, how often you auto save, your currency units, and whether you want to take part in that survey or not. If you press the wrong button and want to change your option, you can do that here. Then in the graphics tab, you can choose your interface size. Especially in larger monitors, I'm running mine in 1440p, you may want to crank this up, maybe three times or even four times if you're running on a 4K monitor. This makes things obviously a lot easier to see. 
it's also here that you can change your base graphics set. You can click the get content button, go in, choose a different one and download it. Then once you've downloaded it, select the option that you would like and come out of the game options to apply that. And there you go, we've got the night graphics. Now it is possible to change the game's font as well, separate to the interface size. But to do this, you need to have a look at the files and I have a separate video all about that. Let's explain a few of the other options on this screen. The AI settings is where you can have computer players play against you. By default, there's none in the game and you don't actually have any to play. You need to get them from the check online content screen. You can also have game scripts. We'll go into more detail in another video, but for beginners, don't worry about that for now. Same with new GRFs. These are another type of mod, and for now, just ignore them and enjoy the vanilla game first, I would say. But then you can get more of these later, again, via the check online content screen. I have dedicated videos about the mods and AIs in this playlist, so check out the link to the playlist in the video description. Towards the top of the main menu, we have things about scenarios. We also have height maps, and we also have multiplayer. I already have videos in depth about all of these things, so we're not going to go into great detail about them just now. Right, I've changed my graphics back to the standard one, and the penultimate button to look at here is the settings button. In here, there are a whole load of settings to modify the way that your game works. And not only that, they're categorized. You can get them into basic, advanced, and expert. I have it on expert all the time to show all of the settings, but you may need to look through to find what you're looking for. The filter up here is perfect for that. If you type in the word fast, you can then very quickly get to the fast forward option that you're looking for to modify. Now, as a general rule, I would say don't worry too much about the game settings to begin with, but I do have a video all about settings that you might want to have a look at changing if you're a beginner in a special video. And lastly, and probably most importantly on the main menu, is the new game button. This is what we're going to use to start a brand new game of OpenTTD. Now, that brings up the world generation screen. There's a few things to quickly go over here. First up are these four options at the top. These are the landscape styles. They are the environments, the climates. You have a temperate one, you have a subarctic one, you have a subtropical one, and a toyland one. Now, these all bring about little variations to the game, but just start with the temperate one for now and explore the others as you go. The map size can be changed from a tiny 64 by 64 squares up to quite a big 4,000 by 4,000. Now, how big you should play? Well, I would say for a starter, maybe the uh, 256 or maybe the 512 by 512 will be quite good for a beginner game. You might find that for longer games, you want bigger numbers, and especially if you go into multiplayer in the future. How you have your terrain is pretty much up to you. Don't go too mountainous to begin with. This can provide extra challenges, but as a general rule, it doesn't matter too much. Neither does the distribution of towns and industries, and of course the level of the sea and the water. And these are the mod options at the bottom for AIs, game scripts, and new GRFs. Just a shortcut to the same places that we had on the main menu previously. Now, before generating, there is one other important thing to note, and that is the date. So for this one, you can see it starts on January 1st, 1950. This is the default start date, and the game runs for 100 years to the year 2050, where you then get your high score. Now, you can play past this point, and many people do, but this is the standard years that the game is designed to work for. If you put the game too early, back into the 1800s, or if you go into the year 3000, you're going to struggle because you're not going to have vehicles available unless you're using a mod that specifically provides them. You're then ready to generate your world and start playing the game. And this is where I will leave you. The first video that you skipped over to get to this one in the playlist is the one that explains all the basics of OpenTTD, how to play it, get in your vehicles, place in your stations, and all of that sort of stuff. I highly recommend checking that out if you haven't already. And of course, the playlist is linked in the video description. All of the videos that expand upon the things that I've mentioned 
the scenario editor, all the multiplayer options, all the game settings, all the videos are there for you to go through at your leisure to learn even more. I hope this video has been useful. Please do give it a like if you have, and if you've got any thoughts, ideas, or questions, pop them down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, enjoy OpenTTD, and goodbye.